Whenever I walk into a place like this, I'm always struck by the scale of the space. There it is, stretching down almost as far as you can see. I imagine it as it used to be. A factory floor, like a beehive, filled with activity and workers. In the silence, I begin to feel what a girl like Catherine must have experienced. So you're coming from a place that's so quiet where the only sounds you hear would be from nature or from the church bells or maybe way off in a distance a locomotive. And then you come into this place, into a city that grew up overnight. Well now you are in the locomotive. All locomotives stop here. And you walk into a building such as this and you're up, up, up on the sixth floor, the fifth floor, with the view that you've never seen before of other mills. And the sounds that you would hear coming in here, that clank and clank and banging, banging, that went on 24 hours a day. The mills never stopped. At first glance, most mill floors look the same. But upon close inspection, you can find little differences that can make or break a building. Go ahead, explore the room, and hear about how the Pemberton was constructed. The beams are 10 feet apart from center to center. The building is about 80 feet wide inside, the beams being in three lengths. The system of pillars formed a continuous bearing of cast iron from the crest of brick is 16 feet base. Here, nearly 27 feet. At the Prescott Mill, the beams are eight feet apart. I cannot call this unsafe, although not so large a margin of safety as I would recommend. But as the column turns out to be on examination, I consider it entirely unsafe. 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 James B. Francis. To me, this building seems like a fortress. It's no wonder that it stood for over a hundred years. And when you look outside, you see a city that's filled with old mill buildings such as this. That's right, go to the window near the Tours B and Skein logo. Notice the building with the peaked roof. That one stands at the same site as the building you've been hearing about. That's the Pemberton Mill. But I brought you here for something beyond what you can see off in the distance. Look, it's right under your nose. You can see these walls are three bricks thick. A half century before, when the Pemberton was built, its walls were thinner. Only two rows of bricks were used. To fill a building this big with so many people and so much machinery seems like a technological feat, especially for 1860. But who figured out how to power something so massive? I found the answer right across the street. Meet me there by the Honeycomb Path sign. <laughs> 